Hi, this is Jerry with BlackSoldierFlyBlog.com and I'm working with my experimental concrete Black Soldier Fly composter today and I, I want to flush the system with some water. Um, I've been doing this occasionally. Uh, my hope is that that will help keep the fluids moving through the waste so that we don't get uh, flooded conditions. Uh, the only filter that I have set up with this unit besides just a a small opening in the bottom, uh, which is at the low point of the unit, is a single layer of very the very porous lava rock, and then uh, roughly uh, eight or nine centimeters or maybe three inches of fine coir chips or coconut husk, husk chips, the fine grade. It's not the powder, but it's got a little oh a bit of a chunky texture, but still it's it's on the finer side. Like I think it's. Um, something like uh, 8 to 10 millimeter pieces but uh, small pieces quarter inch roughly 3 16 type um, of a deal so anyway this unit has been draining pretty well what I want to do is pour the water in the top it's not cold so I don't want to shock the colony it's uh, roughly ambient temperature and then I want I, I haven't glued this fitting this is just the the outflow from the drainage system down into some sandy ground, but I have left this um, fitting unglued so that I can uh, observe what comes out. Normally I would probably put a screen under there of some sort to catch any larvae that will come out, but I'm going to sacrifice a few because I don't have any with me today as a screen. So I'm going to pour the water in and uh, then check the drain and see what kind of volume is coming out. I would prefer to do this with rainwater because of the uh, nutrients and oxygen that I believe that would carry through the mixture. Okay, so that's pretty good flow. The depth of the waste in this unit is about uh, not quite the span of my hand. Well, with my fingers outreached, um, the eight inches, at twenty centimeters, maybe. Well, we're confident with inches, so we'll call the depth of this, including the coir level, roughly seven to eight inches. I'm pretty happy with the uh, the flow of liquids out of out of the drain pipe here. You can see it's totally flooded. What that will normally do is cause the larva to start to migrate out, the larvae. Um, not only the dark ones, the mature ones, but some of the juveniles will choose to exit, but we'll see in what quantities they choose to do that today. You can actually see the fluid level dropping as the waste comes out of the out of the fluid. It's a little nice solid trickle. Now normally with the fitting in place, any larva that might get swept out the uh, opening can climb back up the tube because it won't, it just runs into the ground there and it would, it would probably stop the flow a little bit as the, as the liquid perks into the sandy soil. Uh, but they can always crawl straight up the tube because it's going to be wet. So if they're deposited at the bottom of that uh, descending drain tube, they can, once things settle down, they can just crawl right back up and into the unit that way. Assuming, of course, that it's not totally flooded. I think it would be a hard journey uh, if the pipe remained flooded, but premised on the idea that um, the pipe is open since the uh, ground is very porous here. I think they would have no trouble getting back in. And they can last a long time in, in uh, flooded conditions. So we can see some activity here.
normally the, the dark colored mature larvae, uh, which are ready to migrate away from the waste, uh, I believe they do that predominantly at night, which uh, makes sense given their coloration. It would be camouflage for traveling at night. Since uh, so many different types of animals prey on them, that would explain why they would uh, migrate away at night since they have to cover relatively open ground until they find a suitable pupation site. And since the nighttime would be the best time to crawl away from the waste to do that, a dark color would make sense as well so that they don't show up. Not seeing too many larvae exiting other than a handful of the mature ones. And back to the drain. Still have a nice flow of liquids out. So I would say that this, this unit is uh, draining very well. I'm very happy with that. Uh, it's been in operation roughly five weeks. It's not a long time, but I fed it fairly heavily. So um, again, that's a result that I can be pretty happy with. I'm not, I'm not a, uh, an engineer, but my, my theory is that by putting a fair amount of water through this system all at once, that as the level of the fluid comes down, it will kind of pull oxygen as it washes out some of the fine material. It will pull oxygen down into the lower levels as the, as the negative pressure of the water draining um, would like pull some some fresh uh, atmosphere down into the lower levels of the unit. So I'd love to hear any comments by anybody who's knowledgeable about those types of principles. Well, if you're curious about this concrete composter, this experimental unit, I have details, some details. It's a prototype, so um, I haven't gone into any, any great detail on how to construct this unit because I, mean, I do give some details, but I assume that the next time I try something like this, I will use a lot of different techniques. Um, for one, the uh, larva barrier seems to have failed last night, and I got quite a few uh, mature larvae, maybe one-third of the ones that migrated out actually made it over the the lip of the unit and, and ended up down in the moat down there floating in the water this morning so I fished them out um, but uh, I'm going to have to look at the larva barrier and see if I can't improve on that anyway thanks for listening and uh, please visit the forum and the blog for more details